Good morning, everybody. All right, I think we're ready to go here. All right, so drop a one in the chat if you can see me if we're live. Drop a one in the chat if you can see me if we're live. Drop a one in the chat. Nice, Jeff. Perfect. Jeff says we're live. You can see me. Everybody can see me. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. It's 11 a.m. Eastern. I am mountain time, so it is 9 a.m. for me. I appreciate anybody who's tuning in from California. You're up nice and early on a Saturday. I thank you so much for that. I'm getting a lot of ones in the chat. Okay. Hey, Leonardo. <laughs> yes. All right. Let's get started. So I hope you have your coffee. I hope you're all ready to go. Good morning, Srinivas. So good to see you. Leonardo, Glenn, Fausto412, Danny Issa, David Hollinsworth, everybody. Welcome so, so much. Um, so this morning, let's just quickly talk about what we're going to get into in this live stream. And I do want you to know that um, I'm going to stay until all the questions are answered. I have nowhere to be this morning. I'm all yours. If it's an hour, great. If it's two hours, great. Whatever. Um, so what we're going to dive into today is we're going to talk about trading plans, trade management. We're going to talk about our values. I'm going to give you a calculation, a formula that you can either screenshot or just write down. And this formula is going to give you your exact break even point based on your stop loss and your take profit. I'm going to give you all those numbers. Um, but one thing I do want to say just in the beginning of all of this is kind of my disclaimer, which is it'll be in the description of this video. But um, I just want to let everybody know that I'm not a certified financial planner. I'm just a guy that likes to trade in the stock market. So don't act on anything on anything that I'm saying. Just use what I'm doing as sort of insight into the markets. If you learn about the markets, great. If you find something to add to your own strategy, great. But don't do exactly what I'm doing. Always conduct your own back tests. Everybody knows I'm a huge proponent of one to 200 back tests on any strategy that you're looking to put in the market. So um, I do want to ask you guys that you that you make sure to do your due diligence and back testing before you put anything in the live market. So with that out of the way, let's dive into things. So just looking through the chat real quick. Jason, you're from South Carolina. That's wonderful. We've got someone from Rome. We've got Guy Radares from Romania. This is fantastic. Danny, welcome. Glad to see everybody. Um, Let's let's uh, let's dive into things. We've got 24 people in this live stream, and I think that is amazing. We've got Indiana, we've got Toronto. This is just absolutely amazing. I was sort of joking when I said maybe we could get 50 people in this chat at one time, and it might happen today. Northeast Pennsylvania, Glenn, I see you have nothing to do because you're snowed in. Maisha, always glad to see you. David. Georgia, wonderful. So glad to have you guys. Um, so real quick, I just want to mention that in the chat area, I do have Super Chat enabled. I think all of you know what that is. It's, it's been new to me. It was amazing in the last live stream. But if you do want to support the channel at all, you can drop a Super Chat. I appreciate each and every one of them. I'll give you a shout out when they pop up. Um, uh, I'll throw you lots of love because that really helps support what I'm doing on the channel to get content out to you. And I've told people before, I don't want to put the live streams behind a paywall. I want to just do everything open and for free. So because of that, I'm relying on the Super Chats if you want to use Super Chat. If not, it's good either way. I'm just glad you're here. All right. Buenos dias, Big Chango. All right. Let's get into this. So I think one thing that I'm excited about today that I want to share with you is this, this calculation of this formula. And it's pretty simple, but um, I've found it, I wanted to credit the source, and I can put that source down in the description, but I've found it a few different times. It's a pretty basic calculation. And what I might do real quick is just pop over to my different screen here. And I'm going to show that to you. Oh, Srinivas, you are too kind. So Srinivas just used the super chat. He dropped 10 bucks in. I really appreciate that. So thank you so much. That's a huge support for the channel. So thank you. Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate that. So we're going to jump over to this whiteboard that I have up. 
and I just want to show you real quick what this is like. So I'm going to transition over. You should be able to see the whiteboard now on my desktop. And the thing I want to point out on this is everything we do in day trading is all about risk reward and it's ultimately about what is your break even point because your strategy can vary from day to day it can um, you know one week you know it might be 60 percent the next week it might be 50 percent but the thing that you have to remember is that you need to know certain key metrics and one of those is your break even calculation so I would recommend screenshotting this or writing this down but basically what this means is your break-even calculation is the percentage of winning trades that you need to have in order to just simply break even. What you're going to do is you're going to take your stop loss and you're going to divide that by your target plus your stop loss. So before I, it gets out of hand, let me just show you what I mean. So for my example, my stop loss on every trade is 30 cents. Okay, so I'm going to type in 30 cents divided by and then these brackets and my target every time is 75 cents. And I'm going to add 75 cents back to my stop loss. And then from here, I'm going to explain these parentheses to you in a second. You're going to multiply all of this by Let's do that by times 100, okay? So what this means is you're going to take 75 cents plus 30. So that's going to be a dollar five. You're going to take 30 cents. So do this calculation. Grab your phone real quick or, or grab a calculator. Take 30 cents, which is my stop loss. This could be anything. This could be whatever your stop loss is. And divide that number by a dollar five. And then once that's all done, multiply that by 100. That's going to give you the percentage win rate that I have to have for my strategy in order to break even. So you should see something that's similar right around 29%. So that means that I have to win 29 out of 100 trades in order to break even. Now this can work for anything. You can, you can experiment. You know, whatever your... Um, like if anybody, like whatever stop loss you want to use, like say 50 cents is your stop loss and your take profit is, let's do $1. Okay. So you're just going to add, you're basically going to take 50 cents, divide it by $1.50 and then multiply it by 100. Now the thing you have to remember about this is these parentheses sort of dictate the order of things. So what you want to do is do everything inside these parentheses before you multiply that by 100. So you're going to add these up, and then you're going to divide this by this, multiply by 100, and you'll get your, your break-even point. So that's, yes, um, just in the chat for a second, Green John asks if we're recording this and will I post it later. Absolutely, 100%. It'll be on the channel. It usually takes YouTube, I think, a day to get it processed and then up in the selection of videos, but it will definitely be there. And it'll have a, a live stream thumbnail and it'll have the date, so yes. And I just wanna let everybody know that we have 32 people in the live chat right now and in this live stream. This is record breaking for the channel, so um, thank you, this is unbelievable. So any questions on this calculation? I wanted to just launch into this right away because this is super important. If you can know what your break-even point is based on your actual trading mechanics then you can look at your back tests so you can go to your your spreadsheet look at all your back tests and if your win rate is 38 percent then you know like for example from the one that I just did my 30 cents and my 30 cents and my 75 cents right here, with my calculation, I'm getting a 29% break even. So that's gonna mean that if I do my back testing and I'm able to get a calculation and say my win rate is 40%, 
that means my edge is 11%. So it's nice because if you have consistent mechanics on what your stop loss is and what your take profit is and how you, how you navigate the markets, you can get your exact break even point and then you can take that and you can look at your back tests and see if they line up. So if my 29% break even point is revealed to me and then I look at my back tests and I'm only winning 25% of the time, that makes the decision pretty easy. That means I know that I'm not going to be profitable with that trading, that trading style or strategy. You have to make sure that your break even is lower than your actual win rate. Does everybody understand that? Thomas Smith dropped a super chat for $5, and I so, so appreciate that. Thomas, from the bottom of my heart, ma'am, thank you so much. You're supporting the channel, and I just that's just so kind of you, so thank you. Srinivas, $10 super chat. Thomas Smith, $5 super chat. Thank you so very much. So Danny Issa, pretty simple calculation, but effective. Yes, that's the key with this. It's a simple calculation that can change your trading because you're going to have crucial information that you're going to need. So make sure you screenshot that. You're welcome, Steve D. I'm just, I'm just glad that this is helpful because this is, this really changed things for me in my trading. Um, once I understood what my break even was, then it just makes things very simple to move forward with your back tests. And I guess, you know, I didn't really have a planned layout for where I wanted to go next in the live stream, but what do you guys think about if I dive into my spreadsheet for back testing? Who wants to see that? Drop a two in the super chat, in the super chat. Drop a two in the chat if you want me to do that next. Go into the calculations and go into my spreadsheet. Because as many of you know, um, I really went down a rabbit hole a couple weeks ago. And I should apologize to everyone because I just sort of like, I left for a while from YouTube because I was switching brokers, moving from Thinkorswim over to Interactive Brokers. And so I do need to apologize for that gap. January was just strange. Okay, it looks like we're going, uh, we're going twos here. Catamaran Channel, welcome. Maisha, let's do this. That's perfect. Maisha, I think you're our only lady trader in here. We had a few last time, but I think you're the only one this time. Ivis Duarte, $5 super chat. Thank you so much. So Ivis Duarte says, thanks for sharing your information and your trade ideas. I'm implementing it and liking it. Thank you so much, Ivis. Make sure you get those back tests in. Make that commitment to me, okay? Don't do anything I'm doing based on just what you see. Make sure you get those back tests in. I so appreciate that super chat. That's so, so wonderful. Um, Pawan, uh, my new broker is working really well. We can dive into this some more. I can talk a little bit about that first. Um, Actually, let me talk about that after we get into the spreadsheet. I feel like I got you guys, you ladies, excited about the spreadsheet, and then I'm moving on to something else. So um, let's, uh, let's dive into the spreadsheet first. Andrew Vanderpool, welcome. Um, how often do I do live streams? You know, it's been a little hit or miss. I'd like to do them on the weekends, but it kind of matters with my schedule and life and what's going on. I would love to do this every weekend and just fire things up and keep it open and free and transparent and just use the super chat to support uh, the live stream. So it would probably be a couple times a month, I think is what I would do because my schedule is I'm not free every weekend, but um, on weekends that I am free, I like to really just, just dive in and go for a few hours. So it'll kind of be hit or miss, but I'll give you guys ample notice through the YouTube channel and also through the Facebook group. I'll always let you guys know. So let's dive over. Let's look at, um, let me bring up my spreadsheet. All right. Yes, there we go. All right, spreadsheet time. Type a three in the chat if you can see the spreadsheet and if it's clear enough for you guys and gals. Um, Ray Ray, yes, I'm going to break, I'm going to show you my back test. Um, I'm, I'm going to show that to you right now. You're going to kind of see what I've been doing and I'll go into the chart and I'll actually show you kind of, kind of what I do for a back test. I can even do a live example. Everyone, we're up to 34 in the chat and 30, 34 in the live stream. This is, this is so amazing. Thank you. All right, let's dive in. Looks like most everyone can see the, uh, the spreadsheet. So 
What I want to talk about with the spreadsheet first, and this is pretty complicated, like, it's, it's pretty complicated in that I obsessed over it for a long time, but basically what we're looking at here is a Google Doc where I just created a bunch of headers, and I'm going to go through those real quick and explain them. Obviously, date is self-explanatory, the date of the back test, and you can see I've got quite a few of them in here. I went down a big rabbit hole trying to figure out whether or not I should take 2.5 R profit on my trade, or if I should move my stop loss bar by bar. And I'll get into that in a second. We'll, we'll look in the charts and I'll show that to you. But what I wanted to show you in here is kind of how I made my decision. So with the total R's, it's, it's a complicated, it, so I'm just gonna give you loosely what I was doing. There's a lot of like really strange, my brain stuff in here for descriptions and stuff, and it could take a while to, to explain some of the weirdness, but um, I was basically tracking the R's, and I like to use this window up here to put in a calculation. So this is a sum of everything in this, this column, okay? So once I got those tallied, I can, I can then use it to divide and create um, win percentages over here. You can see I've got some calculations. But screenshot this so you have the headers. Setting up a Google Doc is, is super simple. Um, and if there is a way to share the sheet, Catamaran Channel, let me see if I can figure out how to share this sheet. Um, if I can, I could have the skeleton um, available to you guys. Let me work on that. And then that way you guys can just plug and play and get after it. But basically what I have here is tracking the total R's. And then what I was doing is tracking the S's and L's, which were, which were shorts versus longs. A lot of you know that I've been taking long plays and short plays, and I just want to make sure I have that info so I know which is which. But I was putting in um, how much I was tracking on my stop limit order. So from the entry to the maximum of my limit on the stop limit entry, how big that gap was. I stuck with 10 cents the whole time. And then I'm tracking whether I won or lost on a trade. And then I also like to track the stop loss amount because that way I know, was I using my 25 cents standard or was I using my 30 cents or 35 cents? And I tracked basically mostly 25 cents for everything I did in here. But the funny thing is, if you look at this column, I have a column called stop loss that saves the trade. So let's say a trade stops me out, it goes 28 cents, and then it works. Well, what I would do is put in this column that 30 cents, if that would have been my stop loss, that would have saved the trade and kept me in the trade. If I hope that makes sense. Um, but what I did was I found that there are multiple occurrences, you know, popping up where a 30 cent stop would have saved the trade. So that kind of helped me determine, you know, what that's part of the reason why I switched from a 25 cent stop to a 30 cent stop recently. And um, then I went and I was looking at 2.5 R's profit, and I was tracking this as the 2.5 R and also bar by bar, and I was putting in how much I would have won um, so like in here, you know, if I would have won 3.6 R using bar by bar, but 2.5 R if I would have been just doing my standard take profit at 2.5 R. So it's a little complicated and I could try to make this a little more simple for you guys if I can share it for you. Let me go through the chat real quick. I just want to see what everybody's saying here. Um, let's see. Just want to make sure I didn't miss anything real quick. Yeah, and I'll show you a live example exactly. Let's just do that because that's that's easier. Oh, big green <laughs> catamaran channel, big green, big green button. Okay, let me. Um, I will get this shared for you guys so you can have that. Um, yeah, that's not a problem at all. All right, so let's go ahead and. Jerry Polite, $5. Welcome back, he says. Thank you so much for that super chat. I really appreciate that. Yes, um, I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to be diving into this. 
I'm going to flip over. I'm going to show you guys a live example. I'm going to get this trimmed down to where it makes sense, and then I'm going to hit the big green button, <laughs> like Catamaran Channel says, and I'm going to share it with you guys. Because I think the things you need to have are your win rate, total number of trades, your win and your loss, your stop loss amount, R value, total profit, stop loss. I don't think you need these, and I don't think you need, maybe I'll leave this one in, what would save the trade, and then total R. So let me, let me trim it down, and then I'll share it, and I'll let you guys know when that's done. Um, so from here, let's go over to the Thinkorswim platform, and I wanna show you exactly how I backtest this. So I'm gonna transition from the spreadsheet over to Thinkorswim. Glenn T, $15 super chat. Thank you so, so very much. That's very kind, Glenn, thank you, thank you. You're supporting the channel. We're gonna keep these things live, free, weekend stuff, and, and these live chats, uh, live streams can just continue on. Thank you for your support, I appreciate that, Glenn. All right, so hit, put a one in the chat if you can see my Thinkorswim platform. Just let me know. A little sip of coffee there, and then we're gonna be ready to go here. Just wanna make sure everyone can see my Thinkorswim platform. Drop a one in the chat. We still have 33 people in the live stream. They're the ones come in. Maisha, thank you. All right, let's go ahead. So what I do to back test, let's just go to my, let's go to AMD. So once I get to AMD, what I like to do is, let's see. All right, I click this on demand button up here, okay? So I'm gonna go to the 15 minute chart because that's what I like to trade. So whatever you style you like to trade, just type that time frame in. Whatever you, you know, however you want to trade or whatever time frame you want to trade on, you get that set up. And then you're going to hit this on demand button up here. So you're going to click on demand. And then what I do is I'll click this reset button. Let's give this a second to fire up. There we go. So I'll hit the reset button and I'll reset the time. And I'll also reset, actually the account I think is already reset, but I'll do it anyway. All right, I'm gonna reset that. And then basically what I'll do is come into the time here and let's do Let's do 7.29 and 47 seconds. We'll say go. And this should take us sometimes it's a little funny. Let's see. 29 45. I just want to get it so that it's it's before they open. So there you go. So it's a little painful sometimes just because it's a little, it can be a little weird with its delays and stuff, but I basically just get it set up so it's just before market open. And then what I'll do is I'll come look at this candle that's about to close. And depending on if I want to take a long play, a short play, whatever I want to do, I'll just get those levels. And this is sometimes it'll do this. It'll, it'll be delayed and needs to play itself out here and settle in. That's really weird. So it has a little bit of a delay hook to it. So it's going to stop at 7.29 and 45 seconds whenever it gets there. So what I'll do is I'll hover this candle and then I'll look up here on the side and you can see the high and the low. So right now the high is 88.40 and then the low is 88 or is 87.88. So you make your decision. So for this trade, let's just say we want to take this trade long, 10 cents above the high. So the high is 88.40. So let's say 88.50 is our entry point, okay? So 88.50. So what I'll do is I'll hit the play button and then I'll just watch the candles come out and if I get a breach of 88.50, then I know I'm triggered. And in my head, I'll, I'll, or on a piece of paper, I'll put my 30 cent stop loss in. So from 88.50, I know that 88.20 would be my stop loss. So I'll just watch this. And the reason you gotta watch the, the example play out is because, okay, so there's 41, is because 
you don't know sometimes how things are moving. If they're moving up or down, you can't see the old 15 minute candles and get the whole story. So I like to go ahead and actually just watch it play out. And you can speed this up. I won't do that right now just because we're doing this on the live stream, but you can click this to speed the, to increase the speed of the candle action. So there's 49, so we're triggered, all right, 88.50. So I know that I need to get to 88.90 to move my stop loss to break even, because I like to get 40 cents profit and then move my stop to break even. So my stop loss is 88.20, and I'm gonna move my stop loss to break even if I see 88.90. Now see it's dropping, and I, this is what I literally do. I literally just watch the candles. And I'm looking on the right-hand side of the page over here where this price is. And that's, I'm just watching that, looking for either 88.20 or 88.90. And we'll just let this play out. I'll just give you this, this example so you can see how this looks. But this is kind of the process. And yes, you can speed it up to make it faster, but you've got to really go down the rabbit hole to back test these things accurately. So there's 39, it's kind of failing. And if it drops to 20, we're stopped out. That's a 30 cent stop loss. So let's see what we get here. Um, oh, there was 24, 20, there's 20. Okay, so I'd pause it right there. Okay, so we just saw the 88, 20 hit. That was my stop loss. So what I would do now is I would flip back over to the spreadsheet. And what I would say is, okay, I basically took a stop and I would log that in here. I'd say I did, used a 30 cent stop loss. Um, I had a 10 cent stop limit for entry. I would enter a one for the loss, zero for the win. And then your total R's, you can track. I would put in like this, minus one. So it'd be a minus one for the loss because I gave up one R. If I would have won, I would do 2.5 R. If it was a break even, I would just put in a zero. Okay, so that's how I would do that. Let me pop back over to, uh, to the chart real quick. So as you can see on here, we got stopped. Now, one thing you can do to continue this, and let me do that real quick, is if I press play again, we can see how low this goes. So right now, the low on this candle is 80.05. So we're already 15 cents below our stop loss. So to save this trade, like I talked about earlier, uh, 45 cents still would have been stopped. So I go in five cent increments. So 50 cent stop loss might have saved this trade. But what I do is I look at that and say, okay, 50 cents would have saved it, but I'm not willing to extrapolate a 50 cent stop to two to over 2.5 R for my target. So if I go $1.25 as my target, I don't, I don't want that large of a target on AMD. So I don't, I don't count this as anything that could have saved it. If it would have been just a couple pennies that I got stopped out by and then it worked, then I would say, okay, it got saved by a certain amount, I'll record that. But this is too big for me to consider it to be a save. It would have taken 50 cents leeway. And if I push play, you know, we don't know how low it's going to go. It might drop down to 88. Yeah, almost 88. So right now, it's just a little bit, a little bit too low. So I would end it right here. And then all I do is come back to this, this date picker here. And then I would just go to another date. You know, you can go where I go back to August of 2020 and pick a date. But I'll basically pick a month and I'll start and I'll go the first, the second, the third, the fourth. I'll go right through the month and calculate that all that way. So let me check out, let me get in the comments for a second. I don't want to neglect you guys and gals. Um, let's see, before you switch, so I'm reading Ivis Duarte says, before you switch to short, um, I was only doing shorts only with your strategy based on my previous experience. Stocks move a lot more to the downside. I was glad when you did. Yeah, I've noticed there's a lot more velocity. Let's talk a little bit about that. There's a lot more velocity to the downside in my experience with scalp trading at the open. I don't know if you guys have had that same experience, 
But for me, stocks tend to move quicker to the downside than the upside. And that's why I ultimately decided to only short AMD right now out of the open is because AMD, my win rate on the downside was almost 60%. And that's been uh, uh, amazing. That's a huge metric to have. And I'm actually going to come over here. I'm going to do one thing. Um, I've been using TraderView.com to tra track my trades. And I do want to show that to all of you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put in a filter. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what my win rate is. I'm going to flip over to TraderView. I'm just getting it set up real quick. But I'm just going to filter it by, by my bearish trades. And then I'm going to go to my reports and show you the win rate right now. Because this has been pretty cool. This has been a really big revelation for me using TraderView. Just helps me get an idea of... Where am I? Am I? How am I doing in terms of win loss? And so let's go ahead and yeah, let's bring this in here. Okay, so right now I've got my TraderView account up. Let me. All right, let's see if I can transition over here. Okay, so this is my TraderView account, and you can see, so what I did is I just filtered this by bearish trades. This is all my trades I've taken with my strategy. All my trades. And you can see right now that that pie graph is at 58%. These are all bearish trades. This is my, my whole history with TraderView.com. And there will be a link in the description of this video and also in the banner of the YouTube channel. Go to TraderView.com, use a link in the description or up in the banner and it'll support the channel. But you can sign up for a free account or there are two options for paid accounts. I use the $30 a month account because you can really carve up your metrics and really get into a lot of detailed information that helps dictate when I trade, what style of trading. I would have never known this, that, that I win so much on the short side if it weren't for TraderView. So feel free to check them out. They are fantastic. Um, type a one in the chat if any of you use TraderView right now. I'm curious to know. Andrew, good. So you're using it. That's awesome. Catamaran channel, Leonardo, awesome. Leonardo, that's great. I, I'm David, wow, so everybody's using TraderView. This is fantastic. All right, so it's gonna change how you make decisions in your trading because you just get all this amazing information. Oh, Joseph, good. You don't use it yet, but you are you got into the link yesterday. Perfect, 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 perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, that supports the channel, and that's amazing. Oh, we're up to 35 people in the live stream. I just noticed that. All right, so I'm going to go back to the questions. I feel like I'm bouncing around here on, on all of you. Uh, Maisha says, how do I decide on 10 cents above or below the high or the low of the last 15-minute pre-market candle? Why not 1 cent, 3 cent, 5 cents? Why did I decide on 10? Okay, Maisha, this is this is a rabbit hole topic for me. Um the reason I decided on that was because of the back testing and because of personal experience. I was using one penny and I noticed what was happening a lot of times was I was getting triggered in like, like the price action would whip up and down. It would catch me in and then go against me. So I felt like for me, and it might be different for you guys, if you use five cents or eight cents or 20 cents, whatever you want to use, it seems like when, if I can get a 10 cent move below, below the low or above the high, it indicates to me a little more commitment on the stock. The stock seems to be more committed to move in that direction. So the only reason I chose that, Maisha, was just my personal experience and just my opinion. But here's the key. Whatever you do pick, don't change it. Stay with it. Back test it. If it works, if it wins, 
more than your break-even calculation, then just don't change it. If you notice some trends, like if you're tracking your trades in TraderView, if you put in 100 trades and say you're using a nickel, 5 cents, you might notice that after 100 trades that it would be better if it were 8 cents. But you won't know that until you get a bunch of trades logged. You've got to log a large number so that you can get a, a high enough representation of the in value, the number value, to be able to make sense of some variance that you're seeing. So that was an excellent question, Maisha. Let's see. Let's go through some of these. So let's see, you can't use this. So Faustall 412, you can't use the same stop loss on every trade. Um, yes, you can. Um, you don't have to, but I do. I use the same stop loss every single day. I'm 30 cents. I used to be 25 cents for a long time. Now I'm just 30 cents. All I'm looking for is a sharp, quick move to the downside to trigger me out. I don't care ultimately if AMD goes up for the day or down for the day. I'm literally just wanting to take a small piece of that out. So yes, you can use the same stop loss every single day because that's, that's exactly what I do. Catamaran's right, yes, yes you can. Uh, this is scalp trading, uh, Faustall 412, it is. Um, some people like to argue about, you know, a scalp is only 10 seconds or one minute. I don't know the true definition of what a scalp is. I just consider a scalp something that happens fairly quickly where you're looking to just take a piece of the move. Um, so, you know, like yesterday, if you guys watched yesterday's video, I, it, that trade took 35 minutes. So technically, yeah, maybe that's not a scalp trade because it's not quick enough, but um, I was just looking to take a part of that move, and that's ultimately what I got. So it could be called a scalp. It could be argued that I have people comment all the time that say, hey, this isn't scalp trading, and, and that's fine. We don't have to call it scalp trading. We can just call it day trading. That's fine. I don't really care what we call it. Um, if it generates profits, we can call it anything you want. Uh, let's see, Glenn T, have I done any back testing regarding if the last pre-market candle is green to go bullish or if the last pre-market candle is red to go bearish? I've gotten into that a little bit, Glenn, but I tell you what, let me task you with something. You tell me, go back test that. That's a perfect place to start. Exactly what you're saying, Glenn, go do that. Do it a hundred times back testing, put it in a spreadsheet, and then let me know what you find. I would love to know. I haven't gone deep into that, but that could be something that could give you some indication into whether or not to go long or short. That's an excellent question. Those are the kind of questions that you can build a strategy on the back of. So I compliment you, Glenn. That's, you're thinking about it. You're starting to strategize. You're trying to figure out what can I do? How can I get an indication or how can I, get, how can I increase that win rate by using something the market's giving me, like a green or red last pre-market channel. Let's see, um, let's see. Let's go down and see. So G Cardin123 says, I can't determine a good stop loss or a target. Generally, get the market move right, but get stopped out at 25 cents before it moves. You wanna increase your stop to 50, but a dollar AMD target is big. You could use a different stock if you wanted. You could use something that moves a little more for you if that works. Um, but what I would say is, you know, what did your back testing say? Do you have 100 back tests on 25 cents or on 50 cents? And if you do, that should be able to guide your decision. Don't ever put live money in the market unless you have your back tested win rate set up so that you can prove it to yourself. You want to have confidence going into whatever you're doing. Let's drop back down here. Let's see what everybody else is saying. Um, guy says it's not a scalp, right? Yeah, it's, it's, let's see. Oh, Guy Rodario says a scalp is definition by Al Brooks is when the risk is higher than the reward. When the risk is higher than the reward. So none of this would be scalp because I'm risking $360 to make 900 so maybe it's not a scalp. So Guy, what is the name of what I'm doing then? I'd love to know. And I wanna thank everyone again for the super chats. I don't wanna forget you guys. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, let's move on. So let's jump away from, from that. Let me just real quick look at got the spreadsheet. Yeah, let's go back over here to the charts. I'm just going to transition over here. So let me take some questions. Day trading, perfect guy. That's perfect. Let's take some questions. So we've got into risk and reward. We've talked about the importance of having your break even. And I guess while I'm waiting for some questions to come in, let's just talk about why it's so important to stay consistent. And I think I gave this analogy in a video or maybe the last live stream. You guys stop me if I've already said this. Um, but imagine, somebody told me this one time. They said, imagine planting some seeds in a pot of soil, putting it by the window, watering it. And then two days later, you want to know if it's working. So you dig the seeds up and you look at them and you see, oh, they're not really growing. There's no plant yet. So you put them back in the, in the soil and, you, and then you cover it up. You put it in a different window. You water it more than normal and then you wait a day and you want to know if it's working. So you dig the seeds up again. You can't keep digging the seeds up. You have to plant the seeds and give it a month. You have to let them, you have to give it time to work. You can't take five trades and then say, this doesn't work. I got to move on because you might just be in a cluster. I've hit clusters of trades where I've lost day after day after day, but then right as soon as that cluster ends, I go into, into a nine day win streak. So you have to be very consistent and you have to have confidence in your consistency. And the way to get confidence in your consistency is to have a spreadsheet that says, hey, this win rate is good. You're just in a cluster of losers. Keep moving forward. And keep moving forward with a risk level that you're comfortable with. If every time you lose, you don't sleep that night, your risk is way too high. Your R value is way too high. You need to have it down. I recommend every new trader start with $10 risk and just increase it every month. If you go 30 days and you're profitable, then move it up a little bit. Go from $10 to $20. If you're profitable for another month, go from $20 to $40 and just or 20 to 30. Just keep gently increasing that so that you're never feeling a huge amount of pain. Because if all of a sudden I say, hey, I've been trading $10 risk and I'm profitable. I'm going to go to $1,000 risk. Well, what if the second you go to $1,000 risk, you hit a cluster of losers and wipe your account out? You'll never know what would have happened beyond that cluster of losers. You've got to be able to weather those little storms. All right. Catamaran Channel says, yes, clusters exist. Not a lot of beginners know that. I think you, you nailed that, Catamaran Channel. That is so correct. A lot of people don't realize that when you're trading, you're going to hit clusters of winners. You're going to hit clusters of losers. And nobody wins all the time. If someone says they're winning 90% of the time, they're, they're either not making very much money because they're just taking a couple pennies profit or they're just lying to you because this is a 50-50 world in trading. Half of, the, half of things work, half of things don't, but you gotta be able to weather out the storm, meaning you need to get a large in, a large number value. You need 100 trades, 200 trades, 300 trades, until, and at that point you'll be able to start to see how your win rate looks. You know, what's your biggest drawdown? How much, you know, what's the most you've lost in one, one cluster to the downside? What's the most you've made in, the, in one cluster to the upside? You've got to kind of know all of these things. All right, we're getting some questions in the chat. So Rod said, Rod Westbrook says, you mentioned that your IBKR orders will automatically go to break even. Is this part of a custom order you created or is it part of an order flow built into their OCO? So it's part of their system, their platform. There's a global configuration. If you go to file, global configurations and go to presets and then click stocks for presets in that selection area there is an adjustable stop section and I've actually not been able to get that to work yet I'm still working on that I had it activated yesterday and it didn't jump to break even so I did it manually I'm still trying to figure that, that out but the minute I know what's going on I will 100% report that to you guys so that you know exactly what what is happening and how to do that because imagine if you didn't have to touch the trade imagine if it could just go right to break even 
and then you're just watching the trade play out. You've got the stop loss, you've got the take profit, and then when you get 40 cents, if people for people who don't know what I'm talking about, if I get movement of 40 cents in my direction, in my favor, I like to move my stop loss to break even. Well, interactive brokers will do that for you. I can say, when the stock moves 40 cents in my favor, jump my stop loss to break even. It's apparently a thing, but I gotta figure out exactly how that works. And I wanna stop to tell everybody, we have 38 people in this live stream. This is all time record breaking, taking trades live stream that you're part of, and I wanna thank each and every one of you. Maisha, how did I decide on AMD? How would a newer trader go about finding a stock with similar movements, yet lower in cost that will fit his or her account size? Say between 10 and 50. Maisha, I've got something for you right here. Give me one second, I'm gonna bring up a website, and we're gonna do this right now. All right, I am going to transition this over. I want everyone to drop a one in the chat if you can see this website I have up called FinViz. Maisha, this is for you. And yes, ATR can help, Maisha. Catamaran said, look at the ATR. That can definitely help. That's a good place to, to check out. But I'm going to show you something. Okay, everybody can see. Okay, everyone can see FinViz. So Maisha, here's what I like to do. Go to finviz.com, click on screener. Now, once you have this up, what I like to do, and this is just my opinion, I click this all tab right here. And that gives you all these filters, okay? What I recommend, and this is what I do, is I like to click US stocks. I come over here to the market cap, and I like to go with mid. I say over two billion in market cap. I'll click that, that filters in. Then what I do is I like to come down here to average volume. Can you see that, Maisha, right here? I'm gonna click average volume. And then what I like to do in here is come down and I like to say over one million. So that means an average volume in one day of over one million shares. Once that's all set up, then I can come over here to price. And it will actually let you say for free on FinBiz, you can say under $50. So that filter gets applied. So now if I come down here, I will take these results and I'll go to this volume tab and I'll click volume. And basically all that's going to do is filter volume. So now you can see here's the lowest. So I'm gonna click it again, and now it's filtered at the highest. So Maisha, what I have right here are mid caps and, and above, mid cap plus. I have under $50, I have average volume of more than a million, and I have US listed stocks. That's just my preference right now. So then I'll come in here and I'll say, okay, so what, what do we see? And you're gonna see Ford, GE, Bank of America, you're gonna start getting into some of these things. But you can go through these and you can look and see, you can start opening those up and looking at the charts and seeing what kind of movement they have. And if you notice that an opening, you know, the first 15 minute candle, you know, it averages only eight cents of movement, then you would probably move on to something else. And you can keep filtering through these. And you know, one thing you can do is remove this and say any for price. And then you can come in here and you can actually filter it by price. So I'll filter the low side. And let's go a little higher. So I'll come into the results a little bit more because, you know, maybe you want to look for, or Maisha, tell me, what, what, um, what size stock, what price do you want to, use. Give me an example of a of a price that you afford. What price stock? Do you want to trade a $30 stock, a $40 stock? We'll come in here and we'll find one right now. Yeah, just let me know, Maisha. I want to find, let's find one for you. Let's, let's find a stock and then let's put it on the chart 
And let's look at it from Aisha. Let's figure out a nice stock for you to trade. One that you can look at and at least that you can back test. Okay, so Maisha says 30 or $40. So let's do that. So here's our price. Let's go, let's find 30 to $40. And we'll figure this out. There's 21. We're getting closer. Let's see, let's go 30 to 40. All right, we're in the 30s now. So what I'm going to do, so here's our Bank of America. That one does, I know, doesn't move a ton. Let's look through some of these names. You know what, Maisha, let's, I'm just going to look at Palantir, PLTR. I'm going to put PLTR up on my screen here and let me transition over. So Maisha, Maisha, type in your chart if, if you have one open. If not, you can just watch mine. PLTR, Palantir. Whoa, I got to stop everyone. David Hollingsworth just super chatted $25 and said, thank you. Thanks for your time and ideas, Jimmy. David, that means so much to me. And, and again, everyone that drops a super chat know that I will give you a shout out. That means so much and it just allows me to buy gear for the channel, it uh, updates software, cameras, it's just thank you. That's such a huge support because I don't wanna put the live streams behind a paywall. So David, thank you from the bottom of my heart, that is so kind and that's a huge super chat. So thank you so, I've never had, $25 I think is the largest super chat this channel's ever received. So um, on a record setting day with 40 people in the live stream, we get the largest super chat ever from David Hollinsworth. So thank you, David. Thank you so very much. All right, Maisha. So check out on my chart. I've got PLTR, Palantir Tech. This has been one that's been moving around quite a bit. A lot of people have been trading it. It has a lot of good volume. Um, it's been growing in its share size. Let's go to the daily chart real quick. And I'm just going to see kind of what it looks like. So it's a relatively newer stock. Looks like the IPO came in um, September 30th, right around there of last year. And you can see it's kind of been on a, a nice move up. So let's go to 15 minute chart. And Maisha, you can trade any time frame that you want, but I'm just gonna look at this and just say, okay, let's look at what's the 15 minute candle do on this? So if I come in here, you can see the range. So the range is right here. If you look right here when I hover this candle. So it's $1.23 is the range, okay? So I would basically just go back through the couple days, hover these, and look at the range. So $1.28 total, I go back another day and say, what's this one do? 95 cents. So when you start to get an idea for what it moves, how it moves, then I would just start looking at the candle, the last candle of the pre-market high. So the high is 32.50, and the high here is 32.95. So this moved 45 cents up beyond this high, okay? So you can go to each candle and say, what's the high here? 32.63, and the high of this one is 33.18. So if we had 40, 50, 60, so 50 some cents, not quite 60 cents. So you can start saying, okay, between that less than 60 cents and this one being the high of 32.50 up to 95, that's 45 cents. It seems like 45 to 65 cents is where things are kind of moving. So you can start to develop a plan to say, okay, if it's moving 45 to 65 cents in one direction each time, maybe I could try to get you know, 35 cents of that. Maybe I could do a 15 cent stop and a 30 cent take profit. You know, that's kind of how I start to think about it, Maisha. I start to think about, you know, if I can understand how much it moves beyond my entry point. Now that's if you wanted a penny entry point. For me, if I went five cents above, um, then I would start to calculate and say, okay, 
how far above does it like to move? And I would literally, Maisha, I would drop, I would put into a spreadsheet, how much does this stock move above this high before it comes in, before it stops you out? And I'd do the last 30 days, 30 trading days. And if the average of those 30 trading days is 80 cents, then I would start to look at and say, okay, what if I just tried to get 50 cents of that? Or maybe just 60 cents of that? Just trying to take a piece of that pie. The key is, I think it's a mistake if your goal is to try to top tick everything. Is to try to top tick the top and then hit the bottom. Like you're trying to be perfect. All you want, Maisha, is just a little piece of the move. So with my drawing here, even if you only got in there and you exited there, that's perfect. That's all you need if your risk to reward is set up correctly. Maybe your, your risk is $10 and you have a 15 cent stop loss and you're risking 10 to make 20. As long as you back test it and you've got things lined up, Maisha, you should be good to go. I hope that's helpful. Maisha, do you have any other questions? Yeah, Rod, you're right. Catamaran Channel, thank you for all your insight and help. He's um, Catamaran Channel has been very helpful in this live stream, just jumping in and, and, and helping people out. I like it when there are questions in the chat that other people are handling and helping out. It's wonderful. Okay, Maisha says, this is awesome information. Now we can all risk no more than we can afford to lose, but also risk enough so that a win is meaningful. Maisha, I don't know how experienced you are, but those words are just revealing that you've taken a huge step in the right direction. You're, you just grew as a trader, so, so know that that's awesome. You understand a key concept that 99% of the world doesn't understand. So I, I, everybody should read Maisha's comment that she just posted because, and I'm going to read it again. She says, now we can all risk no more than we can afford to lose, but also risk enough that a win is meaningful. It's perfection. That's perfect. Um, Dylan De Silva says, what other stocks am I recommending for 15 minute, minute closing range breakout? You know, I really, I have, I've actually got uh, another person in the Facebook group who has been really interested in diving deeper into that and figuring out some different stocks. And um, I'll move back over to FinBiz here. You know, I am i don't really know. I, I've got, you know, I've looked at a few. I've looked at Uber. Um, Palantir looks interesting. Twitter always looks interesting. So I really haven't dove deep into that. I'd love for you guys to tackle that because you could report to me and I could help get the message out on what stocks you guys are looking at. And we can even do that in the Facebook group. We can have you know a list of running stocks that, that we like the movement on so that you can back test those. Neo, should we bring up, drop a two in the chat, if, a two, if you want me to put Neo up on the screen and we can look at its range. Mara moves good at the open. Thank you, Dylan. That's perfect. We can look at all those. But if you want me to look at Neo, drop a two in the chat. I'm going to move back over to the chart real quick. Maisha, you're growing. I'm excited for you. This is Maisha has been at these live streams before. She's been part of the channel for a while, and I just really appreciate the input from her. And I love having ladies in the chat and part of the stream. I think ladies make uh, excellent day traders. We still have 40 in the chat. Are we going to get to 50? Call your friends. Get them in here. We got to get to 50 in this live stream. I think we can do it. We were at 43 for a second. All right. Okay. Catamaran's looking at space and the candles are fantastic. All right. I'm going to look at Neo real quick, like we said, and then we'll go to space. So on Neo, Let's check this one out. All right, let's go to, all right. All right, everyone can see my chart. Let's look at this range. So a buck 23, um, the downside moves are very good. 
What's the range on this one? $1.30. So NEO is showing pretty good movement. You can see below the low, there's a larger move to the downside than the upside. Now, and even here, for example, last candle, nice down move, then an up move. Range on this, $1.26. NEO is moving literally the same range almost every day. There's a $1.16, but look, here's the pre-market candle, last pre-market candle. We got a move down, baby move up. Maisha, I got something to show you here. Look on NEO right here. So here, are this high on this candle, is 57.50. The high on this candle is 57.54. You asked me why I picked 10 cents? Because of something kind of like this. This little baby wick that barely gets you in and then drops. So 10 cents for me just shows enough commitment to keep it moving in that direction. These little four cent whips, they can just pop you in and then take you in the other direction. So I hope that kind of answers your question <laughs> Maisha says, thank you, Maisha. She dropped in a super chat of $5 and said, support your local sheriff. I mean, your local YouTube trader, LOL. Yes, thank you so very much. I appreciate that. And Maisha, I hope that this example sort of answers your question about why I like to set a 10 cents high instead of just one or two pennies. Because you, can you can get stuck. You can get drug into something like this, and then it just drops on you and gets you stopped out. But another good move on NEO to the downside. So let's go back another day. Look at this one. Who pointed out NEO? If you guys can remind me, I'm looking NEO, NEO. Was it Srinivas? Yes, Srinivas said NEO seems to move similarly. NEO is amazing. Um, good, Maisha. I'm glad that made sense. Awesome. Srinivas, you're so correct. This is, this NEO is, moves amazingly to the downside. Now, I recommend everyone back test this. Okay, here's a failure to the downside. But look at the upside. Nice big wick up here. This is very interesting. Yeah, NEO could be on this little list. We could put NEO on our sort of collective list of something to back test. Um, and I'm also, I'm going to flip over to space real quick. People have been met mentioning that one. And real quick, I can't remember. What was NEO? So, okay, so NEO's trading in the upper 50s. Uh, Maisha, I don't know if that's um, too pricey for what you're wanting to do. It's trading at 56, 78, uh, but it moves very, very well. And then with space, Virgin Galactic is trading about the same. Seems like that sweet spot might be the mid 50s. Those stocks seem to move really well. Um, so with space, yeah, look at this. We're getting a nice move down, and the range on this candle is three dollars. Wow, range on this candle is $8.30? Wow. What is this range? $3.61? Oh my gosh, this is... Um, Dylan, yes, you are right. SPCE is insane. This is, uh, this is really showing heavy movement. The range is 621 on this first 15-minute candle with almost 5 million shares. Catamaran, like I said, space is easy money, Dylan says. Yeah, this, um, well, so Faustal412 says a 30 cent stop basically doesn't work well on a stock like that. You might be right. I'd have to back test that. Your stop loss, Fausto412, it can be anything. You can, you could make it a uh, dollar fifty. It can be whatever you want. It's just figuring out what works relative to your reward multiple. So if you want to risk 50 cents and you want to have a two to one reward to risk ratio, then you got to get a dollar target. It basically just depends on what your reward is. Magdiel Adams, I don't think you can short Palantir or Space. It's good to find stocks that can be both. Oh, that's a great point, Magdiel. Is, can anyone tell me if Space is hard to borrow? I don't know. You're right. That's an oversight, and I apologize. Space and NEO might be hard to borrow, and you'd have to pay for a share locate in order to short. So they might be only longs. 
that's very that's a very good point MacDeal Adams thank you uh, thank you for that that's so MacDeal if you have a recommendation on a stock that people could back test like AMD um, let me know and Maisha I will say okay so they are both hard to borrow okay Maisha one thing I like to do on um, the reason why I like to use Finviz is just because I have a screener in here and let me bring it up um, let's go to this screen where everything goes sluggish here um, I like to look at yeah so I've got over twenty dollars it seems like when I do mid cap plus so Maisha when I do this it allows me to find more stocks that are more liquid that are not hard to borrow. If you type in large cap over a, like if you do large cap plus, I don't think anything on this list would be hard to borrow. So the apples of the world, you know, the Adobe's, Chipotle's, you can, the larger stocks that are larger cap with huge floats, they tend to be um, very easy to short, and I'm sorry for that oversight. That was, I'm glad you guys pointed that out. The world of work uh -oh. may have changed, but progress still starts with small steps. Um, so I'm gonna close Finviz out real quick. Um, let's go to, yeah, let's go here. Okay. So Maisha, I hope that I hope that helps. Um, if if you can stick to large caps, that's going to probably be your best bet just because um, because you could run into that shorting issue. But if you're only wanting to go long, then you're totally good. Then you're totally, totally good. All right, let's um, – any other questions? So we've broken down a few stocks, looked at a few things. And any other questions in the chat? I love that people are chatting it up. I love this. We've got 37 in the chat in the live stream. I was hoping we'd get to 50. That would have been amazing. This has been a record-setting day for us. Um, this has just been wonderful. Yes, uh, uh, Interactive Brokers, Catamaran, is fantastic. Anyone who's tired of Thinkorswim wants to move on to some other platform, Interactive Brokers is silky smooth, and I want everyone to know that I do have a video coming on that. I'm going to produce a video where I'm going to show you how I set up my platform. I'm going to go into the global configurations. I'm going to show you my settings just so that you guys can get set up because it's very confusing. I It's not like any other platform I've ever seen, and you can get really in the weeds, and, and, and it's hard to get a hold of their customer service. So that was a problem. I think I mentioned in the video yesterday, I spent, I think it was four and a half hours on Thursday, chatting, try, or not chatting, on hold on the phone, trying to get support um, to figure out an issue that I was having. So it can be tough to, to get a hold of them. Yeah, the charts are not great. So because I'm just day trading, you know, using one candle to set things up, their charts work fine for me. But I just keep this account. I have an account with uh, Thinkorswim, and you can just use their charts to, uh, to check stuff out. So David Hollinsworth said he's in the middle of switching to interactive brokers, should be up and running by Wednesday. That is fantastic. You will not regret that. And the four to one um, day trading buying power is, is massive. So you put in 50 grand, you've got $200,000 of day trading buying power. It's just a really, it's just, it's just great. So Magdeal currently, current setup is DOS Trader with TOS. It's faster, but you still have some sync issues. But you like the free trading from TOS. DOS is $175 a month. Oh, wow, okay. Um, so just so you guys know, my fees for interactive brokers, I pay a $25 a month um, data fee to get NASDAQ quotes because I trade AMD, which is traded on the NASDAQ. And then in addition to that, I pay per share for trading. So right now, I'm trading 1,200 shares on each trade. And my um, my P and L or, or my uh, commissions for that trade are fourteen dollars and forty seven cents for that whole trade. So basically fourteen fifty to execute for both the buy and the sell. Closed out, everything done. 
Any other questions anybody wants to dive into? What else can we get into? We explained the, um, the sheet, spreadsheet. We got into the charts. We looked at some stocks. We're talking about the calculation. If anybody missed the calculation, let me bring that up again. So I want to bring this over. If you guys missed this calculation, screenshot this or write it down. Break even calculation. You're going to take your stop loss. You're going to divide it by your target plus your stop loss. And then you're going to take all that times 100. That's going to give you your break even point. That means, so for my trading strategy, you can see written on here, I need to win 29% of the time to break even. So that means if I take 100 trades, I need to win 29 of those to be able to break even so I don't lose money. The funny thing about this is, think back to school. What or anything else, what other place in the world can you do the right thing 29% of the time and still have a job or still be in school? Imagine if you'd have gotten a 29% on your exams in school. You would have never made it, right? But then in day trading... You can, you can be right 29% of the time and, and still not lose money. Oh, so uh, at, at Kamalgar, you missed the calculations? Well, screenshot this. This is a break-even calculation. People can in the chat can kind of explain it to you if they want, but it's a, a silky, smooth way to know how what percentage of the time you need to be right in order to break even, not lose money. How do you get your official win rate? Can anybody tell me that? How do you get your official win rate? What do you have to do? Yes, you have to back test. 100, 200 times. You've got to get a lot of back tests in there because that's going to give you your true win rate. Say your win rate's 50% and your break even calculation is 29%. That means you have a 21% edge. TraderView, Srinivas is correct. TraderView.com. In the description and in the banner of the YouTube channel, there's a TraderView.com link that is my link for, for taking trades for the channel. If you use that link and sign up for an account, it supports the channel, and I'm forever indebted to you. Any other questions anybody has? So Magdiel says that DOS is worth it for him. Um, he's trading full-time. But otherwise, toss is good, but just not at the open. Yes, Magdiel, that was the whole reason I left was because toss is worthless for the first five minutes of the day. Hey, Maisha. Maisha says, thank you for sharing your knowledge and for giving us an edge. Now we can trade like the casino instead of like some degenerate gambler. And at the end of the month, the house always wins. Again, Maisha, wise words, fantastic. Keep growing. That's You're on the right path. You're on the absolute right path. Any other questions from anyone? Anything else we want to talk about? This live stream has been amazing. We did not get to 50, though. Should we stick around and get to 50? Yes, uh, Srinivas, I just take the one trade a day. Um, exploring other strategies. I'm always open to exploring other strategies, and I'm always backtesting something. I'm always messing around with something. But right now, I'm just trading with my one strategy. Oh, Faustall 412, you found a workaround to speed up your toss after months of suffering. I'd love to know what it is. Please let us all know. That'd be great. And thank you again. Um, just want to do one quick scroll back in the feed. I want to thank Maisha for her $5 super chat for supporting the channel. That's super kind. We're having a record setting super chat day. David Hollingsworth. Drop $25 in the Super Chat. It's the largest Super Chat we've ever had on the channel. So I want to thank you so much, David, for that. Let me scroll back and see what other... Let's see. We've got... Way back. And then Glenn T. $15 Super Chat. I so appreciate that, Glenn. Thank you. Jerry po Polite came in with $5 and says, Welcome back. These Super Chats just are huge support. Ivis Duarte, $5. Thank you for sharing your information and your trade ideas. You're implementing it and you like it. Thank you so much for that super chat. Thomas Smith. I love seeing Thomas Smith. I, Thomas, are you still in the in the live stream? $5 super chat from Thomas Smith. You, all, you always come through. And Srinivas, leading things off like I think you did in the last live stream. $10 super chat 
from Srinivas. I thank you so much for that. Just going back through, making sure I didn't miss anybody. Thomas, are you? Yeah, Thomas is still here. Thomas, thank you for your super chat. I so appreciate you. Um, so I think, let me go, let me check on my notes here. See if there's anything else we can, I can throw at you. The, um, I do want you to know that I am going to get this spreadsheet. I'm going to get it cleaned up and I'm going to share. Oh, Andrew, look at you. Andrew Vanderpool, $20 super chat. Thank you, Andrew. That's so, so kind of you. You guys are making a lot happen. You're keeping this thing alive, this live stream stuff. If you're getting value out of this, um, then we need to keep doing this. If, if anybody's getting value out of this, then I, need to, I would love to keep sharing my experience and sharing my thoughts and getting feedback from all of you as well as ideas from all of you. I feel like everyone in this live stream, everyone in the Facebook group, everyone on the channel is just the lifeblood of what's happening. Um, I'm just the public facing figure here, but you guys are making it all happen. You're the life behind it all. So um, I do want to thank you all. And, and Andrew, $20 super chat is extremely generous. So I want to thank you very, very much for that. Yeah, Thomas, I agree with you. I liked everyone's questions as well. I like that we have enough people now in the live stream that the chat is sort of growing and people are interacting, not just with me, but with each other in the, in the chat. So, um, it's pretty awesome. Uh, let's see. Pedro00 says, do I have to pay a commission for borrowing buying power? Um, you don't. When you use someone like, I mean, really, I think anybody. Say you put $50,000 in an account. Your day trade buying power is usually four to one. So you multiply whatever you deposit by four. And that's, that's uh, usually how that's calculated. That's how it is for me right now for interactive brokers. Let's see, Thomas Smith, I followed you from the beginning. Thomas, when did you join the channel? I'd love to know, like, did you, because if you're hardcore, like, were you like early 2019? That would be exciting. Andrew, thank you again for that super chat. That was very kind of you. Um, Jason Fowler says, does IBKR have automated strategies? Could you not set it up for this kind of trading? Um, I don't know, that's a good question, Jason. Um, I think you can get really algorithmic and uh, really deep into it. So I think you could set something up to be automatic. I like punching the button. I like watching the candles. I like being part of it. So right now, um, I'm not automating it. Maybe in the future I will, but right now I like just, I like hitting that button. Oh, Thomas, that, that makes me happy. I'm so glad you're part of the channel. Thank you for, for being here today. So spreadsheet, I'm gonna get this set up for you guys. I'll hit the big green button. We're gonna share that thing out. I'm going to clean it up and make sure that it has just the stuff that I think is good to be tracking so that it can make, if I can empower you guys to make your back testing easier, that's just going to reduce friction for you. Because I think, I think what happens is people, they view back testing as such a painful thing and it can be. And I think it discourages people and then people will say, ah, I'll just, you know what, I'll just take 10 trades and see what happens. But then before you know it, you're, you're losing money. So it doesn't, you know, it doesn't work well. All right, let's see, Maisha. Okay, Maisha has to step away to work the nine to five. No worries. Uh, keep learning and your nine to five will be temporary. Like an option contract, my nine to five now has an expiration date. Bye all. Maisha, thank you so much for coming in. Have a great day of work and enjoy your weekend. Thanks for stopping by. All right, I'm going to clean this up. Any other questions from anybody? I think we'll probably wrap things up. Um, and so we can, uh, we can move on. This has been amazing. So last minute questions. Anything else you guys want to drop in the chat? We can, we can cover. I think we covered a ton of topics. We've been going almost an hour and a half now. So this is, this is wonderful. Leonardo, thank you for stopping by. It's always so good to see you. David Hollingsworth. Thank you for the record setting super chat. I can't believe we got a $25 super chat in, in I, you guys are blowing me away. So, um, thank you. I, I'm, I'm indebted. We're going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep coming up with a plan and I'm going to give everyone a lot of notice before the next live stream. And, uh, 
we can just keep pumping this stuff out and keep talking about stuff. But get your questions. As you go through the next couple of weeks, anything hits your mind, jot questions down, get them recorded so that you can bring them to the live stream. Because I think the chat is going to get super valuable. I think people are going to be able to constantly interact and ask questions of each other. And that's super valuable. Uh, Jason Value, why do I stock suppose the futures? Um, I've just never gotten into futures. I, I, I've never gotten into it. That's There's really no reason. Glenn T, you appreciate my time. I appreciate your time. You all stopped in. You scheduled. You know, this was early for some of you, and um, I'm, I'm very happy to share. Uh, Rod, Rod Westbrook just put $10 in the Super Chat supporting the channel. He says, thank you, Jimmy. God bless you. Rod, you are very kind. I'm, I'm so happy to give value to the community. The community is growing. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed, but on the YouTube channel, we're over 6,000 subscribers. So I think, I think we can just keep this thing growing. I think next stop is going to be 10. I think, I think that's realistic, 10,000 subscribers. JP says, thank you for giving us hope, sir. We appreciate you. Joe. Joe, thank you so much for stopping in. I appreciate you as well. Um, yeah, this is a record-setting day. I mean, we still have 31 people in the live stream. I just love that we can just hang out and talk stocks. So if anybody has any other questions about stocks, if anybody wants to, you know, last minute, talk about anything else, I've got a live chart here. We can talk anything you want. I so appreciate the super chats, you all. You're just supporting the channel. And we're just going to keep things going. This is going to, it's going to just keep keep moving and keep shaking, and uh, hopefully, hopefully we can all learn together. You know, I think if we stay safe and we back test things and we just use logic and we try to keep emotion out of things, it can be a huge, a huge positive influence on a lot of people. I don't think, you know, we don't need to get in and, and hack away and, and revenge trade, and you don't have to bet the house on every trade. You know, a lot of people like working, and then you have a little side income, you know? Say you're risking $25 on each trade to make 50. You know, a couple hundred bucks a week extra, that's a huge deal. So, yes, Guy Rodera says you need to factor in commissions into the formula, I know. But you know what, Guy? Here's my thought on commissions. I pay $14.50 every time I punch the button. I don't care at all. And I know that's easy for me to say now because my I'm trading at larger levels now, $14.50 out of my $900 profit, I don't care at all. But I know that when you're when you're trading smaller size, it eats up more of your commissions. Um, it eats up more of your profits. I get that. But we're playing the long game. So we got to get long term when your risk can be a little bit bigger. And if, if your strategy allows and you don't have to be scalping in the first few minutes, you could have a strategy where... You know, think or swim works perfect, and you just trade for free. Commissions are three dollars. You mean? Yeah, everybody's talking Ninja Trader. There's just a lot of great platforms. I've heard things about um, TradeStation as well, but I couldn't use them because I use Mac. It's it's on Windows only. So Magdiel says I mentioned in the Facebook group. But there's a toss study to back test. Let's see. To back test the open range breakout and it gives you a CSV report of the profits and losses might be helpful to some. Magdio, can you put can you put a link to that um, or instructions in the Facebook group? I would so appreciate that. I would love to know that. Magdiel, if there's any way you can do that for me, I would love to have that. I would use that massively. A toss study to back test the opening range breakout and it gives you a CSV report of the profits and the losses. I would love that. Please do that, Magdiel. I would really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, let's see, just going through. All right. Any other questions? I think we might officially wrap things up. You guys and gals have been amazing. My hat is off to you. 
You've made today a wild success, most successful live stream yet, and um, we're going to be back at it soon enough. I'm going to give you more notice. I'm going to let you know when I'm when I'm going live. I hope that all of you got ample notice. Tell me if I did an okay job of letting you know. Um, I'm I'm putting it in the Facebook group and I'm putting it on the uh, community tab of the channel and also putting it sort of on the home page of the channel. So. Um, Let's see, can I keep doing this live on Saturday? That works great. Yeah, I definitely can. Um, drop a one in the chat real quick if you feel like I advertise the live stream sufficiently. Put a two in if you think I could have done a better job of advertising the live stream. And if you put in a two, tell me what you would do to be better. I just need that info. Shrinaras, thank you for putting a one in the chat. One, 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 everyone's putting in. Okay, Catamaran, you put a two in, so let me know. Oh, ha, 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 you're very funny. All right, you guys you guys are crazy. All right, um, I hate to wrap this up. Let's see, YouTube put it up in front of me, so I clicked it. Nice. You like the personal. Okay, Andrew, thank you. I tried to, to go through and personally invite people. If you like that, I'll keep that up. All right, I hate wrapping this up. You guys have been amazing. Thank you again to all my super chatters. I think we're going to wind it down. We're down to 29. I think we got up to 43 people in this live stream, which is remarkable. So thank you to everyone. Yes, Catamaran Channel, join the Facebook people. Yes, come over right now. Go to the YouTube banner, click the Facebook icon. Come in, send me a notification. I'll approve you. You'll be part of our group. We've got 233 people right now. And while you're at the Facebook icon, click the TraderView icon and sign up for a TraderView account. That gives a kickback credit to the channel. More support there. Yeah. All right, everybody. I hate to do it, but I'm going to sign off. This has been an amazing Saturday morning. Go enjoy your weekend. Go think about trades. Back test something. I challenge all of you to back test something this weekend. And, um, and then just keep me posted. Drop something in the Facebook group. Let me know what you're trading. Let me know what you're doing. Um, I love all your comments on the videos. Keep those coming. Always appreciated. Peace out, y'all. Um, thank you, Catamaran, for stopping by. Tom H., you're so very welcome. You too, Rod. You have a great one as well. Enjoy your weekend. Everyone, if you're watching the Super Bowl, enjoy the Super Bowl. Stay safe. And, um, yeah. I think we're going to sign off, and uh, we'll see you next time. All right, everyone. Have a good one.